recognize the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this time I'd like to yield myself two minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to begin by saying why we're doing this. And I want to get into the accounting of all of this at a later time in this debate. But let me just simply say why we are here. We are here because we heard the American people in the last election. We are here because we believe it's really important to do in office what you said you would do. We said we would have a straight upper town vote to repeal this health care law, and that's precisely what we are doing here today. Now, Mr. Speaker, why do we believe this? Because this health care law, if left in place, will accelerate our country's path toward bankruptcy. This health care law, if left in place, will do as the President's own chief actuary says will do, will increase health care costs. We are already seeing premiums go up across the board. We're already hearing from thousands of employers across the country who are talking about dropping their employer-sponsored health insurance. And we're already hearing from the lack of choices that consumers will get as this new law is put into place. This new law is a fiscal house of cards and it is a health care house of cards. It does not make our health care system better. I would argue it makes it weaker. There's two ways to attack this problem. And I want to say in the outset to my friends on the other side of the aisle, we agree that health care needs fixing. We agree that there are so many serious legitimate problems in health care that need fixing. Affordable insurance, the uninsured, people with high health care costs and high health care risks, those need to be addressed. But we can fix what's working, what's not working in health care without breaking what's working in health care. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I would simply say this. We believe we can get to the moment of having affordable health care for every American, regardless of pre-existing conditions, without having the government take it over, without a trillion dollars of a combination of Medicare benefit cuts and tax increases. We believe in this. Let's have health care reform put the patient in charge, not the government in charge. I yield myself an additional 20 seconds to simply say, it was recognized. we believe that health care ought to be individually based, ought to be patient-centered. There's two, two ways to go. Put the government in charge and have the government put in place the ration, rationing mechanisms to tighten the screws and ration health care, or put the consumer in charge and have providers compete for our business as patients. Hospitals, doctors, insurers, our business as patients. Hospitals, doctors, insurers, time that's the system we want. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I, re I uh, reserve Gentlemen the balance of my time. Gentlemen, reserves balance.